What I have to say will not take long because I really want to make sure we have time to release the power that's here tonight. And there is this tangible anointing of power. Thank you, everyone in Chosen that took the time and focus to stay engaged in the intercessory partnership. Uh, the Chosen started about three or four years ago as a, a, a means that when we go out on assignment, when especially God gives me a place or thing to do, there can be an in, uh, intentional intercessory prayer. And this year it made such a difference in both Kenya and London and in Israel. And so thank you. And I want, I believe there's an impartation. I think all of the mansions, which began just a year ago, which was our intentionality to be a people of abiding prayer, to abide in Jesus, his words abide in us. And on the first Wednesday of the month, we set aside a gathering for mansions. And so this being the first Wednesday, but with the prayer going on, we uh, do it during this service. But I woke up on Sunday morning, not pre prepared for this in the least bit. <clears throat> and then it's just not stopped since this. The, I woke up with the waking dream and waking experience of mansions and chosen. And what I heard the Lord saying, abiding prayer, intercessory prayer. Mansions, abiding, chosen, intercession. And then the word of the Lord grew into the service. And before I knew it, I was declaring that we were entering into prayer for an hour a day with the Lord. An hour of prayer with the Lord a day. And I had to repent, even that service, the first service, that years ago, and I don't know how many, maybe it was even as many as 20, in my desire to help people pray, I lowered the level from an hour to 15 minutes, hoping that by engaging people in 15 minutes of prayer, they would find that prayer was more than, 15 minutes was more than, they, they needed more than 15 minutes and the joy was too much to stop. But I don't think that worked. I think I lowered the standard. And you say, well, where's the standard of an hour? The only place we have in Scripture is in Gethsemane, when Jesus comes to his disciples asleep after he had asked them to stay there and watch with him. And he went away and prayed for one hour, and where he prayed the prayer of, of, of consecration, dedication to the Lord. And when he came back, they were asleep from sorrow. And it's, he said, could you not watch with me? What? Could you not watch with me one hour? And then he went back to prayer. They tried to pray, fell back asleep. And an hour later, he returns and finds them sleeping. This time, though, he doesn't even wake them up. He just re goes back and he prays the same prayer and stays in the same posture until he is having angelic strengthening. He was strengthened by an angel. Now, the reason there's so much power for the hour of power, which is, you know, an old saying, but it just came back alive inside of me. So much is just re, like, just like broke loose because there's now that there's faith for an hour, that means there's grace for an hour because we're saved by grace through faith. So faith leads to an awakening of a fresh move of grace to go to a new season of prayer or salvation. But while we were worshiping, I saw the Lord. You know, if you know, the Jesus began his ministry at the, at, at, uh, the water of baptism. In Luke's account, it declares that while he was praying, after he came out of the water, the heavens opened, and the dove came down and descended from heaven, and the Father spoke. And Luke's account is different than Mark and John's, because Luke, in Matthew, and Matthew and such, they, they, you hear the statement of the Father speaking to the multitude. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But when it comes to Luke, because he's, in the, he's catching the praying Jesus, the father says, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When he leaves that place of baptism, affirmation, and Holy Spirit empowerment. He goes up and is led by the Holy Spirit to the Mount of Temptation. 
And there he fasts and prays and encounters the devil and overwhelms the devil with the word of God that's abiding in him. And it says the angels came and strengthened him. So I'm, I'm seeing this. And then on the last effort of his ministry, before he was offered, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, which we just spoke of. And there in Luke 22, 34, it says, an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. The reason we call an hour of prayer the hour of power is that's where the power is transferred. It's in prayer. And what I have seen in 41 years of serving Jesus and in going through many moves of, on the planet is what so often leaves us desolate is that we, in, we, we place our heart in something external and we hope for something to, an outcome to come with our effort. And then it doesn't happen as we hoped for and it, and it costs us more than we understood and the reward isn't worth the cost and we get desolate. And I've come, be, been convinced in the last six years that my life is in Christ and my enjoyment is there and all that I am to obtain is found there. So the hour of power, the, uh, the, the anointing that's coming tonight to, uh, to, to activate abiding intercessory prayer to a whole other realm is so that first and foremost we can honor the Lord by bringing ourselves to him. You know, there's so many petitions going out for God to come and do something. God's already done everything. What he's looking for is a people to appear in. And we could say, oh, God, come and appear in Jubilee, but he won't appear in Jubilee unless he appears in enough of us individually because we can't sustain what he does if we are not sustained in who he is. Prayer is not, not a means to get something. It's a means to, be, to obtain what he has done, it, to enter in to an encounter so when this came to me we honor you and all you have done and become by bringing ourselves to you I I saw see I've been praying for a long time and you can spend an hour in a lot of different ways and you can come from a lot of different a angles and a lot of different positions and places. What I want, to, I believe God wants to do for everyone in Chosen, everyone in Mansions, everyone in just the body of Jesus and Jubilee, is to create a, 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 a practice, a prayer that begins where most of us end. That begins in Christ, in the holiest of holies, behind the veil, where, God, where Christ is, forerunner, our high priest, that continues into the fullness of what he's accomplished in adoration, agreement, and allowing him to be all that he is, to kiss the Son, to not diminish what he's done, but to exalt what he's done, and there be able to do business with him after we have calibrated ourselves. see what I've learned is that Jesus prayed more than anybody in the Bible when we just look at the scripture we can see the pattern of Jesus is is a pattern of prayer to ministry prayer to miracles prayer to anything was first prayer and then after it the back to prayer but in the prayer that Jesus did it was it was so that he could stay engaged in the truth of who he is in father by the revelation that the word brought of who he had been brought to the earth as. That he was the holy seed placed in a woman. That his assignment was to crush the head of the serpent. That he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and went about to do good. That he was to offer himself willingly as a sacrifice for our sins so that God would multiply that seed and bring many sons to glory. And he was the son of God. He had to calibrate him, recollect himself under these truths until the truths that were true, whether he believed them or not, were he and the truth were one. And that's what prayer was. Prayer is and always will be bringing ourselves into God, not necessarily needing to try to bring God down to where we are. 
When he did that, then he could go out and do anything. Now today, our assignment is just the same, except we are in Christ. So our calibration is into Jesus. We are having to, <clears throat> in the midst of conflict, say that Jesus is peace. In the midst of poverty, say Jesus is the wealth that I have need of, because Father will meet my need in his riches and glory. And I'm going to agree with, but more than a mental ascent, I'm going to experience spiritually in worship and adoration, this is a truth that I am one with. So we come to pray so we can calibrate ourselves to agree with Jesus in his resurrected glorified place, seated at the Father. We come to pray to come sit with him. We are not trying to pull him here. He's already here. He's in us. It's just he's not got much expression because so much of life is swallowing up our life. When our, his life should start swallowing up life. But again, I want to say this to you because there's an anointing that's going to come and you're going to, in tomorrow it's going to hit your prayer life. Your prayer life is not to try to change the stuff you're in. Your prayer life is to bring you into who Christ is. Your prayer life is to experience Jesus Christ in the fullness of his victory and triumph in the spirit until whenever God chooses to manifest it in the natural. But not to, to question the, the wonder of God other than true conversation without denying God. Prayer, prayer is and always shall be the means that man moves himself into the presence and the place where God is. Jesus is and always shall be the means that God moved man into the place where he is. Jesus did it all so we could be there. We, all we do is come into a posture of, of experience. Prayer is a place where we experience God, where we, we, we place ourselves in a position. See, we'll, we'll practice this. I mean, it's just, I got like volumes of this packing it behind me as I speak. Prayer is the opportunity to experience the scripture far beyond intellectual ability or willful cognitive decisions or, or giftings. It is where the, the scripture, every one, every word becomes movement and sound and, and um, emotion and light and life. And it's not a burden because it, it's, it's, it's the door in. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you want. If you can get into the harmony and unity abiding in me and my words abiding in you, then you basically, you've got a blank check to do anything. Because you'll be in total harmony with me. If I abide in Christ and Christ abides in me, then, then my my trouble is not the stuff around me. My trouble is any of the stuff around me keeping me from in him. So the movement is, is, is into the unity. So, I woke up, got into the first service, told the truth that I... I, I lessened the, the, the level. Lo lowering the bar from an hour to 15 minutes hasn't worked. And God is calling us back to an hour of prayer. It's more important that you find that place in Jesus Christ and secure the victory of delightful living than anything else we do on the planet. We want to save America. We want to save people. We want to save relatives. But nothing gets saved until we're saved. And the more we're saved, everything's saved. And the bringing ourselves to him is, again, the primary responsibility of prayer. When we pray to change someone else and forget ourselves, then we, we hypocrite. We go off in comparison praying. We go off and wonder. It, it's just, there's just so many things that, that disrupt us because prayer is, is this door into this experience of the fullness of Jesus Christ. So what prayer successful prayer in the presence of God, in the promise of God, in the abiding experience of Christ in me and me and Christ, the word in me and 
walking through the, four, the Hebrews 4, the living logos, letting it separate me, bringing me into communion and union, back to the throne of grace where Jesus is, bringing my confession, that whole experiential prayer, practice in an hour context. Of course, you can go longer, and sometimes you won't be able to do an hour. But in that is to bring us to a place where we are thoroughly satisfied. That we are absolutely, totally content. That whether we have money or don't have money, whether we have friends or don't have friends, whether we are honored or dishonored, it matters not because we have become so united in the victory and the triumph and the joy and the pleasure. And then we touch love. And love is where everything flows out of. The glory of God flows from the love, the justification, the glorification, all this inseparation, separableness of love. And if you've ever, and, and whenever we spend practical seasons of, in love, we don't care what else is happening. So we again begin to radiate what we're carrying. So what is coming, the anointing for abiding our prayer is for total satisfaction in God. Absolute contentment and completeness independent of the situation that you find yourself in. And to the point, you're not escaping your problems, you're overtaking them. You're swallowing them up. They're being gulped down. Life is just whatever. And I just know that that morning, and I began to declare, we have to do the hour of prayer, the hour of power. It was as though God said, I've set, I've set the focus the simplest secret that I ever set in motion was that every man would spend, bring himself to me to appear before me to be transformed into who I am. And every person experiencing me and who I am and what I've done, everyone has same equal access. Everybody's Bible is the same. And everyone can access as much. And if and when that begins to translate, then the living stones begin to become a holy habitation. And then God does much more on the outside, and many more can find their way inside. But the joy is, we are happy, satisfied, delighted, sweet, kind, gentle, full of favor and mercy. And nothing that is being denied us is stopping us from delighting in Jesus Christ. The bitterness, the anger, the hurt, the woundedness, where we, our souls start to just be quiet and start then re-magnifying God. So what I want to do, because I don't want to spend a long time, it doesn't take long for electricity to light a bulb. It does not, and it's coming. And I want you to pray. I, I don't care if you, do, this is not perfection, so don't worry about you. Forget it, then start the next day. But I really get, mean this is an anointing to pray. This is a fresh activation to appear before God and in a joyful, experiential way. To, to, uh, it'll include praise. But we begin in Jesus. Now, we'll learn how to do that. But for wherever, you start in Jesus. Don't start out there in your measly problems. Don't whine and complain about how bad life is and why won't God do anything. Don't start there. You start in Jesus. You start in that he is the glorious, victorious, triumphant king who opened a door that no man can shut and you're walking through it into the holy place where Jesus is. You find in your Bible enough truth that can, enough, enough proof that that is the truth. It may be any... We're going to then pray the scripture. You take the scripture that gives you the promise, the opportunity to enter in. Hebrews 12, 10, 19 is a place to start if you don't have a place. That by the blood we have boldness to enter into the holiest of holy through a new and living way which he consecrated for himself. That is in his flesh. We enter into where the high priest is of our confession and we join, we come with a true heart and full assurance of faith. It's a great place to start. But it's not a ba 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 Pray. I'm coming boldly. Imagine boldness. When I began doing this, I would imagine myself running down the stairs into the living room where my father would be to, to interrupt him in anything he was doing so that I could just enter in and be touched by his affection. 
to the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus answers every accusation, everything that's bothering you. There is not a thing you have done, whether it's two seconds before you started praying or while you're praying in your mind. There is nothing that can then say, God says, oh! You just come and you say to yourself, soul, shut up and get in this thing. Get in line with truth. You, this Jesus has done it all and his blood has answered it. And any and every accusation has been silenced by the blood of Jesus. That's where we start. First two minutes. First minute. We press it, we press through the, the, the consecration of his flesh, what he made, the new way, the blood, the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, intercession. We come in until we, we know and we say, Here I am I in the holiest of holies before my Father, sitting on the throne of grace, and we we awaken our imagination. Don't let prayer be limited to your life because it's lousy. But let it be unlimited by the heavenly realm that Jesus Christ sits in. He's seated right at, the heaven, right at the right hand of the Father. Father sits on the throne of grace. Jesus, our high priest, is there to minister with us along with our confession of hope. We are welcomed and accepted. We are received. We are standing before the Father, holy and without blame, in love. We have been adopted as sons. All this is Scripture. Scripture is your script. You are the playmaker. You are, you are actors inside the kingdom. You are, you are portraying who Christ is in yourself and you're taking time. And it, you can, one scripture may be all you get to have for one hour. Because once a word of God gets, comes alive, then just don't go anywhere until it's finished. It starts to explode. And then in that place, in the presence, with the word coming alive, we stay there in agreement, and that can take easily one hour. And beloved, it, you don't have to pray for your kids or the president or the rest of the world. I don't really care anymore about the president, my kids, or the rest of the world. Until I am back in truth, I am no good for anybody. I'm dying in death. Do you understand that? You, when, you're, when you're fully invigorated, fully, in, fully satisfied, fully contented in this glorious, satis, this glorious con, person, Jesus, the glorious one, all our prayers are going to be out of unbelief and need and whining and sympathy. And, and, and so you just stay there. Now, there's going to be times you can get there in five minutes. And then you can look around and go, how's the world going, Pops? What do we, where do we reign together in? And there's other times, it's, it's, how's the world inside of me? Wow, my soul. I didn't know that. That's pretty, pretty real. Let's process that. Let's come together up to the true, to your, in a true heart. But I'm fully assured that I'm accepted. It's not about whether I'm going to be welcome tomorrow or told leave in a few minutes if I don't deal with this. I'm here because of Jesus. I can have the stinky attitude. I can be full of hate and I can be in the presence of Jesus. I can be full of lust, lying, everything. But I'm not, because I don't get holy and then get in Jesus' presence. See, that is the works mentality that Pentecostal spirit people go into and backwards out of what Jesus accomplished and become null and void in any effectiveness. In fact, if you want to know the truth, when you're the worst is when you need to go pray. I mean, when we're in the worst of our condition is when we need to just go appear before God and just say, Lord, I am so glad Jesus is enough. And activate the blood and activate the process of the place of victory and access the one because what you behold, you become. And if we look at ourselves, we become more of ourselves. If we look at him, we become more of him. So this prayer anointing, this hour of power, this recommitment to position ourselves it will then allow us, yes, intercession, which is the confession of hope. It's the, the, it's the proclaiming the praises of God. It's beginning to declare the movement of heaven. And, and this abiding prayer is to explore the place prepared for us and to delight ourselves, to delight ourselves, to delight ourselves. And while our soul is learning to just kind of have to submit, 
not kind of have to totally completely submit to the truth of Jesus Christ and to allow the truth of Jesus Christ to frame the feelings of my emotions to swallow up the, the guilt the shame and make it full of sense of love and hope and peace it's it's amazing but that's where we begin and that's where we explore and that's where we end we don't accomplish anything that hasn't already been done we don't do anything that hasn't already been accomplished all we are doing is becoming who he is but the becoming who he is is the growing up into the head is the maturing of the church it's the agreement with who he is so we're bringing ourselves into him is the greatest honor and it, it, it like I said beginning this years ago it would be so hard and I would have to take one verse 1019 over and over I'd take an hour just to practice 1019 but once I got it once you feel it once you get the connection life water affirmation We are not going to chase other people's praise when we can have the praise of God. And every man's praise will come from God. Now, that doesn't have to be at the white throne of judgment. It can be right today. To hear God praise you is the Song of Solomon. It's the affirmation of his acceptance of you and the beloved. There, it's, just, it's just glorious. It's just glorious. And I didn't plan on this. I didn't think, what's the next step to make Jubilee go into the next place to do the next thing? I was just waking up on Sunday morning, jet lagged, <laughs> dreaming away in the spirit, sensing the, the value of the chosen for intercession, mansion for abiding. And the Lord said, I'm going to combine the two, call the two forward on Wednesday. And then he said, I'm going to call everybody to pray for an hour. We could do a lot more important things, it might seem, but that is the thing that we should do right at this moment for us individually and not worry about how it affects someone else just to allow the Jesus in us to come alive. And so I want to pray for us. And, I, and it's going to, uh, I'll pray for everybody online. You, we're going to have, uh, I'm just going to go by and I'm going to release the anointing uh, for the hour of power, the strengthening of might with the inner man. And for the one moment, my touch will be the touch of the Holy Spirit to communicate from the glory realm into the inner man. And you will receive it. And it will be there as a seed that will activate every time you step into prayer. And you'll step into prayer tomorrow. So those of you who don't have a practice of prayer and you don't know where you think of right now when you're going to pray tomorrow and where you're going to pray. Make a plan to do it. Set a date with Jesus. Because that's important. Because this is for prayer. And when you touch that place, it will start igniting. And you're going to begin immediately in the glory, in the holy of holies. To, in, I don't care what your brain circles work. They're lies if they do not allow you access immediately into Christ Jesus. Glorious presence, fully accepted in the beloved, independent of how bad you were yesterday. Because you can't be good enough today to be in his presence tomorrow. So just stop that. That's pride and arrogance and ignorance. <laughs> but Jesus Christ is the only one that made us acceptable in the beloved. And therein is we, are we saved. So we start there and we access who he is by honor and we praise him. Once you're there, give him some praise. And then just hold your place until it is finally, it's the, until the imprint starts happening. And then do it the next day. And the next day. And the next day. And in a short time, like a year, there will be a rich harvest coming. Yeah. And, and we already know all of this. It's just this time, there's just an anointing to activate it. Yeah. So I say thank you to every chosen who has stood in, in agreement in prayer and intercession and for every mansion who's heard the, the call of Jesus to, to abide in the secret place that he has prepared for them and to allow his word to abide in them. And I say thank you praise Jesus that he has sovereignly said it's time for the upgrade for all of us every one of us you want to stay connected to a mansions and chosen you know, go on the internet and you can sign up and we'll get you emails if you already got an email then you're already in but the point is the most important thing is that we 
we will be in his presence, beholding him in truth and experiencing, experiencing. He is better than a movie, more vivid, more influential once you're touched and allowed truth to touch and begin to paint and the imagination come back alive. So I'm going to, if those who, for the, you can, I'm going to pray for everybody on the internet and thereby everybody here. So if you're in a hurry and need to move, you can receive sitting on your chair just as well as you can by me laying hands on you. So I'm it's not, again, see, all this stuff about externals and comparison and have-tos and get to some measure of some outward success to be accepted is going to just go... <laughs> and you are going to find total, delightful, joyful acceptance in the beloved and you will not need somebody to affirm you not your husband not your wife not your boss not your pastor because if you need anyone to affirm you to the place that was given you in Christ then you're susceptible to that person's lack of affirmation to tumble you into a place of rejection and despair and once you have the place then you are not looking for someone's affirmation you're an affirmation machine because you're going around seeing Jesus in everybody. Because once you know Jesus in you, you know Jesus is in everybody. And it's not hard to see Him. I don't care who they are, what they're doing, and how bad they're acting, and how rebellious they're living. You can see Jesus. Because your eyes open because you see Him in you. Do you see? <laughs> so, those who, look, those who would like the, me to lay hands on you, we're going to just form a line from one side of the building to the other. Those online, get ready. And those of you who like to have to get going, we'll, we'll start with a prayer. But one single line, let me have enough room to walk there. And if you feel the power of God overwhelming, you just sit down or kneel down. It doesn't, you don't have to feel anything physically. And everybody online, while everyone's getting ready, let me pray for everyone. You can be seated in the sanctuary, you can be online. Or you can... Some of you will come back and listen to this prayer many times. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I speak to everyone. I declare to you today that the sovereign hand and the sovereign purpose of God has been set in motion to act to strengthen you with might through His Spirit in the inner man. That just as Jesus experienced angelic strengthening, so shall you. That you are being commissioned to the fullness of your mission by accepting the next place of submission to Jesus Christ. And in the submission to Jesus Christ and who He is and what He has done, kissing the Son, you shall be strengthened with might through the Spirit of God into the inner man, and Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. You will have lightning bolt experiences where at one moment you are overwhelmed in the circumstances in life but then by faith you step through Christ into the holy place and find Christ and find yourself there. And there you are strengthened with might. From the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus, then comes the strength of might through His Spirit into the inner man. And Christ dwells in your heart by faith. And you become rooted and grounded in love. And then begin to comprehend with the living stones, the full body of Christ, the grandeur and glory, the width, the length, the breadth, the height of the love of God. And the fullness of God starts filling you. And the Lord would say that for each one of us, there is a fullness we've yet not touched. There is a fullness so full that if we ever get so full, we'll overflow. And that God would say, yeah, I want to fill you till you overflow. I want you to come and drink and drink and drink until you become so full and satisfied with me that anything beyond just overflows to those around. But it is no longer your responsibility to save the world. It's your responsibility to come to me. It's no longer your responsibility to save anybody. It's your responsibility to come to me and be saved and allow my salvation to fully affect you. I am initiating, igniting, and activating the hour of power in my church. I am calling everyone into an hour of power, and the power is coming for the hour right now. So receive the hour, receive the power. Receive the anointing to pray, 
to rise to the new level, to stay in the new place, and to engage. And I will, I will, says the Lord, I will, I will make your prayer life vibrant, electric, full, visual, illuminating, uh, eliminating of the past, and and a lightning of the future. I will cause you to see Jesus, be Jesus, in Jesus, as you become one in Jesus. I am here, you are here, I have made a way for you, you're in the way, come with me, in the way, into the place that I've prepared for you. And you will intercede like you've never interceded, you will change things like you've never changed things because you'll pray from the promise and not the problem. You'll pray from heaven and not from earth. You'll declare the answer, not the problem. The questions will be swallowed up in the answer of my son. So here I am, here you are, and here comes the power. Just receive, just receive, just receive. In the name of Jesus, 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 so Rabata, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. 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 Whoa. Shero ba 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 ba. In the name, in the name. In the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name, in the name. In the name of Jesus. Whoa. Shika cha 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 ba. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name. Whoa! In the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Whoa! In the name. Whoa! In the name. Whoa! In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. In the name, in the name. Whoa! In the name, in the name. Whoa! In the name, in the name, (laughs) in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name, show, whoa, 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 yes, Lord, yes, Lord. All right, now lift up your hands and receive. From heaven, now from heaven begins the outpouring, the strengthened with might to his spirit in the inner man. I was a contact. All I was was a switch, all a spark. But the glory comes from the glory realm of heaven where Jesus seated. (laughs) More. More. Yeah. (laughs) You find your satisfaction in Jesus Christ. Your fulfillment is in Jesus Christ. Your worth is in Jesus Christ. Your place is in Jesus Christ. Your identity is in Jesus Christ. Whoa! Inner man, right now, that's where he's, he's activating. The inner man. Shabbat Everyone online, he's activating the inner man, the inner man, the inner man. Ah, ta 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 ta. Ho ta 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 ta. Ho ta 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 ta. Ho ya la mashaka la maka. Ho la mashaka la ka. Ho la makaka makaka la. The inner man. Whoa. Now, Lord, we pray that as we go home, this now is the genesis of the next season of prayer in our life. This now is the place of beginning in everyday prayer. That you will, through the Scripture and by Holy Spirit, train us to reign with Christ, to enter into the holy place through the new and living way where a high priest is. We will have honest conversations and sort out lots of stuff, but never at the expense of your majesty and beauty. But under the banner of your love, we will become 
all that you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask the blessing that we would be find satisfaction in the beloved tomorrow, like in a fresh way, in a beautiful way, in an abounding way, in living fashion. And Lord, I thank you for the, for the honor to bring ourselves to you. That we're not carried by another man. We're not a paralyzed person that needs four to bring us. That we've been given the honor to come to you. And you receive us. And you speak over us and sing over us. And we sing with you and speak with you. Mm -hmm. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy, oh, Lord, you are beautiful, Jesus. You are glorious, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are beautiful. Oh, oh God. happening already. The communion is growing. <laughs> Tell him he's beautiful. Tell him, describe him through scripture, with words through your imagination, triumphant, kind, overcoming, glorious. Go ahead. Everyone sing. Everyone praise. Everyone come forth. Everyone in grace. Oh, glorious, 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 glorious King. Hallelujah, you are. Oh, Father, we are forever grateful, will ever be grateful for this sovereign time that you've set over Jubilee. As you called us a house that has established or has settled or has yielded to and submitted to the foundation of Jesus Christ and started a building upon us, you've set the, found, the first stone on the foundation of Jesus tonight with a new fresh anointing of prayer for an hour a day knowing that in this practice, all other practices will find their expression. Praise will grow. The Word will grow. Life will grow. Witness will grow. Goodness will grow. So, Lord, we receive this stone laid upon our foundation of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that tomorrow, that though it may not feel as spectacular or sparkly as a people together in a moment, we will labor to you, with you, to agree with you, to receive and experience you in your glorified, victorious state. And by faith in the name of Jesus, we will begin in the holy place where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We will seek for the things above. We will engage in what you've accomplished on the cross, but more than just what was accomplished in the substitution an identification, but what happened in the resurrection and the ascension and now intercession. And we will behold you. Eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand. Lord, for your namesake and for your glory, let it now begin. Let it now begin in Jesus' name. Well, amen. Whew.
Yeah, amen. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Have fun tomorrow.